a certain point for me where the fundamentals of lighting suddenly clicked and I was able to understand how to approach lighting better. I hope this video will help you get closer to that point because once you do, you become an artist that knows what brush strokes to use in certain scenarios. In this video, I wanted to discuss how DPs hide lights in their scenes, which will help you make better decisions when lighting scenes of your own. First, we need to understand the far side key. What this means is placing your light on the opposite side of your camera. In pretty much every movie, we'll see the far side key being utilized, and pretty much every technique in this video will use this method in different forms. Window light extension. This method was famously used in the movie Phantom Thread, which was directed and DP'd by the great Paul Thomas Anderson. They used light mats on the top interior part of the windows to extend the window light coming in. They are also using a far side key, which I spoke about previously. Using this method gives a lot of freedom to move the camera because lights are rigged overhead. This sells the effect to the audience that daylight is coming through the window by bringing up your interior exposure to better balance your image. There are a bunch of different ways to do this, but will require more than one person to set up. Some great tools for this are a pole cat, also known as an auto pole, that goes between walls which gives you a rigging point to put your light without damaging walls. Practical Light Extension This method is very commonly used in night interior scenes because it can be cheap and effective. For example, in the film Selma, Bradford Young utilized practical light extension by having practicals in a scene on a dimmer and then bringing in another practical with the same lampshade and placing it out of frame to shine more light onto the actor's face to extend the practical lighting. Now take that lamp, strap it down to the stand, Around that light, we put foam core, we create a box around it, and in the front, in one wall, one of the walls, we put a top, three sides, and the fourth wall is completely open, and that's where you get the shade, bouncing light back into the soft white box that you can then either slide some diffusion in front of, and then you can just walk that little source in. It's got the same color temperature, it's got the same, it's coming from the same source, so it's got the same energy. You're still burning tungsten filament, you know, you're not bringing in an HMI and gelling it and trying to create a book light, and then before you know you've taken up four feet of the room. You don't have to do that anymore. You can actually take, take up as much space as the light itself. Top light. A top light is tough to do on a lower budget level because it requires crew that knows how to rig them safely and know what they're doing. A lot of the time, top lights are utilized for dinner table scenes because it allows you to shoot 360 and when you need to get a lot of coverage, a lot of the time scenes require that type of lighting. You could still do this on a lower budget level using things like a C-stand arm and booming it out using a lighter fixture, or a lot of the times on bigger film sets you'll see things like 2K booms or menace arms. Practical Astera Tubes. I'm planning on doing a whole other video for this topic, but I wanted to touch on it for this one. A very popular light that cinematographers are using are Astera Tubes. I'm sure by now we've seen them directly in shots like on music videos, but I'm gonna tell you some ways that they could be less evasive. In this scene here, we have practical fluorescent fixtures, which I've taken the bulbs out and replaced them for Astera Tubes using some simple zip ties. Using these lights in frame has become very popular lately, especially because they don't look like movie lights and they could easily pass as ordinary fluorescent tubes. Silhouette lighting. One
One of my favorite methods to light is sometimes using the classic silhouette because sometimes that doesn't require any lighting at all. You can do this by having no lights in your scene at all and simply utilizing natural daylight coming in through your windows. This method has become very trendy lately, but it's great because it's easy to achieve and looks great. If you'd like to learn more about lighting and cinematography, then subscribe to my channel and there will definitely be some more content like this. Thanks for watching.